gonna announce it. I'm sure I can ask you actually. I'll go ask you. singing when you were, we were together. It was great. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Our opening song can be found in your gather hymnal number 848. Gather us in. 848 in your hymnal. As we do gather together, we know that we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace, the love, and mercy of Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. So besides the rich and haughty who are here this morning, <laughs> us poor <laughs> are gathered together. And that's the humor of it all, but also the seriousness of it all. No matter who we are, no matter what our life is all about, and whether we're saint or sinner, God says, I want you to come with me. I want you to come in union with me, because I love you all, even if others don't. 
So let us in these moments of silence now confess to the Lord how we have not been there for others as the Lord has been there for us because we do judge, we do reject, we do misunderstand, we do project, we do not forgive. But God wants to forgive us no matter what and no matter why. So let us give him that opportunity as in silence we confess and are touched by a merciful Lord. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You were sent to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. You're seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all. Forgive us our sins and then bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And now let us give our prayer to the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead all of us to a share in the very joys of heaven so that this humble flock gathered here this morning may truly reach where you, the brave shepherd, have gone before. You who live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. No. 
and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed for you had gone astray like sheep but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord jesus said amen amen i say to you whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber but whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep the gatekeeper opens it for him and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
I don't get it. I exercise all the time, and yet I've developed a heart disease. It's just not fair. I take all kinds of medicines, antioxidants, and, and everything, and guess what? I get cancer. It's just not fair. You know, as a parent, I like give everything I can to my children, make sure I'm a good example for them, help them in every way possible. And one of them flunked out of school. It's just not fair. How many of us can use that same phrase? It just ain't fair. Because of what you or I go through. Yeah, it's not fair. Nobody ever said life would be fair. St. Teresa of Avila is noted for a particular saying, and this is how it happened. She and a group of 50 nuns were going to another convent to visit some nuns there in Spain. And it was a terrible day, storming, you know, raining, you know, the stream that was just rising and rising to dangerous levels, almost like we're having now with the Mississippi and other rivers. And they get to this one bridge, which is rather fragile, and, they, and Teresa just said, Lord, help us at least get us over this bridge so we can go to the nuns safely. And as you can imagine, they got right to the middle of the bridge and it collapsed, all the nuns went into the water. Fortunately, they were all safe enough. They got to the shore and went on. And this is the famous quote from St. Teresa of Avalon. Lord, if this is how you treat your friends, no wonder you have so many enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Because sometimes we think it's God who is doing this to us. We don't seem to be able to separate God from the reality of life in a way that then we do blame God for things that there's no reason to blame God for. Life is unfair. Let me remind you about that second reading that we had, that letter that Peter wrote. And this is what was proclaimed. And think of ourselves now. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, that's a grace before God. For to this you have actually been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. And guess what? When he was insulted, he didn't return an insult. When he suffered, he didn't threat those who were causing the suffering. Instead, he just handed himself over to the one who does just judgely. He himself bore our sins. And this was done in his body upon the cross. So that free from sin, then we might live for righteousness. If anybody has a right to say life isn't fair, it was Jesus Christ. You couldn't find a more perfect person doing nothing but good, healing people, welcoming people that others did not welcome, forgiving people, going through all that pain and suffering to say, this is how much I love you. And look what's happening to me. Look what I'm going through. Life just isn't fair. So anytime any of us at home, here this morning, when we feel life isn't fair, just remember Jesus. And the fact is that a lot of times we have to go through that, that questioning. There was a Christian writer, Philip Yancey, and he was writing a book, and he came to the part of wanting to say how people are really disappointed with God. And he got to the chapter where he wanted to talk about, of course, the biblical example of good old Job from the Old Testament, and all that Job went through. This just, noble, righteous, faith-filled person, and all that he suffered with the loss of children, and the crops, and the farm, and, and going through all kinds of health problems. He didn't deserve it. And we know that he's always been an example of somebody who's angry with God. Job is the significant anger with God for what's going on in life, until a certain point. And so Philip Yancey said, now who could I maybe interview that would be a, a, an example today in this day and age 
that has gone through a lot. He remembered hearing about a person by the name of Douglas. So he got in touch with Douglas, sat down for an interview. Now this is interesting, this Douglas. He was a noted psychoanalyst and had some very wealthy and well-to-do people, very individuals who pay all kinds of money for the help. And you know what he did? He gave up this lucrative practice and all that money because he wanted to go to a poor neighborhood so that he could give the same service to those people who could not afford it to help them with their problems, to give them a new lease on life, to restore some hope to them. And then guess what happened after he did that? All that wonderful ministry. His wife came down with breast cancer. As she was going through the breast cancer and the chemotherapy and things went on, wouldn't you know, eventually they found now a spot on her lung. More cancer, more chemo. And so as he was taking his wife and 12-year-old daughter somewhere one day, they were driving along and a drunk driver crashed over the median, smashed right smack dab in the front of their car, and his 12-year-old daughter went through the windshield with lacerations all over her face from the glass. His wife obviously was injured, and he himself, he hit his head on the dashboard. And from that time on, he had double vision and, and couldn't really gather, you know, the, the sight. So much so that he couldn't even go down a, a set of stairs without some help, or else he'd stumble and fall. And he could no longer read, which was, was his passion in life, reading. And so, Philip said to him, when you went through all this, and now that you're at this particular point, just like Job, are you someone who has been disappointed with God and full of anger? And Douglas said, no, that never even crossed my mind. I never thought that I would be angry with God. God didn't do this. Life happens. Now, many of us in this day and age are used to a little different phraseology. And I won't use the exact word, but excrement happens. <laughs> Yeah, and it stinks. Life stinks sometimes. And not because we deserve it. It is unfair. But this Douglas said, well, the way I look at it is, I just have to be able to separate the two. You know, God and life. Life is unfair, but God is never unfair. God is always there to be with me. God will give me the strength. God will give me the help. Whatever I may need. So, they concluded by saying, well, you can either be a victim or you can be a student. A victim would say, why did that happen to me? Why does all this stuff always happen to me? And a student would say, well, Lord, I don't know why it happened to me, but I just hope that you maybe help me to learn something, teach me, guide me into something better later on. A true victim will say, life is unfair, and I'm sick and tired of it. Poor me. Pity party, poor me. That's the victim. But then the student will say, I can't waste all this time just being a self-pity party. I'm going to use my time and energy to go out and help somebody else, maybe somebody who has the same problems that I have, some of the same issues, the same difficulties, the same challenges. Why waste my time just saying, oh, poor me, poor me, poor me, because other people need some support. Other people need some encouragement and understanding. And I'm going to take time for them, not just time for myself. Are we victims? Are we students? Can we learn something from when we go through these crises? Can we learn more about ourselves? I would hope so. How patient are we? How understanding are we? Are we people with strong faith? Maybe we learn a lot about our family and our friends. Wow, I can't get over. People are, you know, bringing these dishes over for us to eat for supper tonight. You know, someone is going to take, you know, the child, my, my baby, and babysit so I can go out. You know, all of a sudden, all these people who sometimes I don't have much contact with except maybe a Christmas card or, you know, a birthday present, they're there for me anytime. All I have to do is call up. And it brings out the love of others. It brings out their comfort, their support, their understanding, trying to say, I'm here for you. We can learn so much about ourselves, about other people, if we just have eyes of faith. And if we're listening, if we're listening to Christ, 
in the gospel today. Remember the good shepherd? The good shepherd says, my sheep hear my voice. Do we hear the voice of Jesus when we're going through these crises? When we're going through the problems of life that are unfair? Do we hear his voice or are we maybe only listening to other voices? Are we distracted by other noises, you might say? Other people's judgments or understanding or lack of faith or their own ignorance, whatever. Do we hear Christ speaking to us? And that's so essential for the shepherd to be able to say, I'm here for you. Let me speak to your heart. Let me calm your fears. Let me restore some peace. What we can learn when life is unfair. And I just want to conclude by a little story about Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I keep on having trouble saying saint because I meant just used to Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Anyway, one day she was down in Venezuela and she was going to visit a family, a very poor family, but a family who gave an actual lamb to the nuns to use for their meals at the convent and to share with maybe some others. And she got to the people's house and she went to thank them, and she noticed that they had a son over there in the corner. And uh, she said, oh, no, what is, what is your son's name? And they said, his name is Teacher of Love. Wow. That was his actual name. This is my son, the Teacher of Love. He was so handicapped. He was so disabled. He had so many problems. And they said, we call him teacher of love because he taught us in his situation how to really love, what love is really all about. Not when it's easy, not when it's comfortable, and even when it can't be returned in many ways that we would want it returned. He's taught us how to love and how then we, because of God, can be an instrument of God's love. Not disappointment, not anger, but love, so much awaits you and you and you and me. If we could listen to the good shepherd and realize that, yeah, life is unfair, but that doesn't have to stop us from growing, from loving, from having hope and being at peace in ourselves. Amen. Now, for the next 15 minutes, <laughs> now let us stand in prayer. For peace in the world, especially between the Ukraine and Russia, but also all kinds of wars going on in Africa, especially the Sudan. For those battles, for those wars that go on between couples in their marriage or relationship, or within families or circle of ex-friends, wherever the battles, wherever the wars, mentally, emotionally, literally, physically, Lord, somehow bring peace in those situations and for those people, we pray to the Lord. Amen. And also as, see, not only Father Pat goes traveling, but our Pope goes traveling too. I'm surprised he didn't cross paths somewhere along the way. But well, we do pray for the Pope as he goes to Hungary and as he continues to spread a gospel of welcome and sensitivity and compassion, especially for immigrants and refugees. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Donna and David Henning, Donna who broke her leg quite seriously in Florida, that has returned home now and is in recovering for her and her recovery, we pray to the Lord. Lord and Lord, we thank you for the many ways that you have blessed us and got us to this point in our journey of faith. Continue to walk with us, we pray to the Lord. Amen. And anybody else who may have a special prayer, please let us know loudly enough that we can hear it and then be able to make it our prayer as well. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary Hadley, her upcoming surgery. Lord, hear our prayer. For the three children being baptized today, uh, that the uh, great light of baptism will shine forever in their lives, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you ask us to listen to your voice. We thank you now for listening to our voices, to these prayers that we have spoken. But you know what the rest of the prayers are, maybe silently in our hearts and on our minds, and you welcome them as well. And so we thank you, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our offertory song can be found in your hymnal number 717, Shelter Me, O God, 717 in your hymnal. Now, we who have received so many blessings from the Lord that sometimes we don't even think of, are not even conscious of, now give to the Lord these gifts of bread and wine in our very lives. So let us pray that everything we give will be found acceptable. May the Lord accept. Sacrifice at your hands. Praise the glory of his name. For our good and the Lord, grant we pray that we may always find delight in these Easter Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us then may be the cause of our unending joy. This we ask through Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty, our salvation always, everywhere, under all circumstances, to truly give you praise and thanks, especially in and through Jesus Christ. For with the old order having been destroyed, a universe having been cast down, now renewed, an integrity of life restored to us because of Jesus, we are overcome with Easter Paschal joy because we know that every land, every people, every nation, every language, every religion continues to give you praise and thanks. And that is why we join together with them, with one another here and at home and with the angels and saints as we sing these words of praise. Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the source, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed by a friend, he entered un nonetheless willingly into his passion. So he took some bread, he gave you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And then in a similar manner, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving thanks, gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And there for as we truly do celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, God, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, and we thank you for counting each and every one of us worthy to be here in your presence this morning. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the very body and blood of Christ, we will become one in the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your people here and at home, but throughout the world, we ask that you continue to use Francis, our Pope, with Mike, our Bishop, and the women and the men who are leaders of all religions, churches, and denominations. May they always be your instruments of justice, of peace, love, and harmony you have created for everyone, not just for us or people like us. We ask that you would remember in a special way our relatives and our friends, those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died touched by your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. And we remember in a wonderful way, Dixie, oh, pardon me, Mary and Arthur Delman. Lord, we ask that you would have mercy on us. So then, along with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with her spouse Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we in this day and age may lead lives pleasing to you and then may merit to be co-heirs with those saints in heaven to praise you and glorify you through your son Jesus the Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Realizing how for Christ life was unfair, that he even said, Father, why have you abandoned me? But he said, I have come to do your will. May that be our prayer like it was his, using his special prayer. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sin primarily, but more importantly upon our faith, so we could share peace and unity here with one another, with others at home, others the rest of this day, wherever we find ourselves, and then one day with you in heaven forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord's peace and his joy be with all of you. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign and prayer for peace. Did you say her name was Debbie? No, not yet. <laughs> screwed up. Yeah, don't worry. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are all of us, now called to join in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I'm desperate for you. And of course, grateful to so many of you for your generosity and the sacrifices you have made to help Catholic charities by your donations, but knowing that it continues to be a need. And as we continue to pray every day for the success of Catholic charities, not just as an organization, but for the people who then are affected by your donation because of how you help them, complete strangers to you, but it shows you still have love enough for all people not just some. So we are very blessed today to have Laurie representing the Catholic Charities to come and give us a few words. Mike. 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 Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate uh, having the opportunity uh, to speak to you for a little bit about Catholic Charities. Um, my name is Laurie Brownkreutz, and I am a volunteer with Catholic Charities. Uh, I've been volunteering with the organization for a few years, and I'm also a parish captain, so um, I'm responsible for um, helping our parish to achieve our, our goal for Catholic Charities. So again, I want to say thank you, and um, if you donated last year, um, some of the information we have is that 1,500 individuals were impacted by the donation that you made to your community last year. And 347 of those were people from, uh, were children, and uh, out of that 1,500. So there's been a direct impact, not only in the total Western New York community, but in your community, in your specific area as well. So the theme of Catholic Charities is hope, 
and that's been our theme for, um, for quite a while. Uh, we seek to provide hope. We seek to come along uh, and support others and, and be a beacon of hope to them. Um, the work of the appeal has been going on for nearly 100 years, so we're about to celebrate our 100th anniversary. Catholic Charities offers 57 programs at 43 different locations, and all throughout Western New York, they're able to assist and help approximately 140,000 people are, are impacted each year. Some of the programs that they offer are things like behavioral health services, food pantries, multi-systemic therapy, immigration and refugee assistance, and many more programs. In addition to the work of Catholic Charities, they also support Fund for the Faith, which helps to provide spiritual and vocational support to benefit the faithful throughout the diocese. So I want to just share a brief story about a family that was impacted by Catholic Charities. They were impacted by the program called multi-systemic therapy. One of the clients wrote to them, who was a mother, and she wrote that four years ago she had a very significant problem with her daughter. Her daughter started out being an A student and was very active in softball and other activities at her school. But unfortunately, her daughter suffered a traumatic event. So father talked about some of the different traumas that can happen in people's lives. And unfortunately, this woman's daughter suffered a traumatic event. And after that, she basically uh, was involved in a downward spiral. Um, she started cutting herself. Um, she started getting involved in drugs and alcohol and running away from home. Now, the woman found out about Catholic Charities through her daughter's parole officer. The parole officer said that she should investigate Catholic Charities because they have this program called multi-systemic therapy. <clears throat> now, the mother was reluctant to become involved with the program because she found out that several hours of her time and her daughter's time would be involved in the therapy. But the mother felt that her child was the most important thing in her life, and she really needed to spend the time to get involved and do the extensive counseling that's involved in this therapy program. Now, through the counseling of both the mother and the daughter, they were able to get out of their spiral. The daughter was able to rejoin the mother in her home. The mother said she was so grateful for Catholic Charities and all the support that they provided to her family during this time of crisis. So I want to say thank you if you donated last year because you've made a great impact in Western New York and in your community as a whole. Your parish goal this year is $129,000. And thus far, you have raised $114,000. So we're so grateful for that. Um, we would like to advise you and ask you, if you have not yet donated, to consider a donation this year to Catholic Charities. We do have pledge cards that are available. I have pledge cards, and you also have pledge cards um, through your pa Catholic Charities captains as well. Um, you've no doubt received a letter from Catholic Charities asking for donations. Um, but there are several ways to donate. One of the ways to donate is um, to use the QR code that's present on all of our uh, Catholic Charities materials. So you can donate using that QR code. And you can also donate through text messages. So if you text Give Hope 23 to 44321, you can also donate um, via your phone with a text message. So again, I want to thank you for your generosity to Catholic Charities. Catholic Charities is very excited about our 100th year of existence. We want to reflect back on what we've done in the past um, and how we've been beneficial to the community. And we also want to look forward to another 100 years of service. Catholic Charities is going to have a special event in October in order to recognize our anniversary, so stay posted for more information on that. So in closing, um, I want to say that our, our, um, our patron for Catholic Charities this year is um, Venerable Nelson Baker. And I just want to close with um, the Catholic Charities appeal.
prayer. Heavenly Father, your servant, Father Nelson Baker, showed how to meet the needs of the young, the poor, and those who are homeless. Strengthen our hearts that we may live and serve with the same compassion for those who in our time are suffering from poverty, oppression, and being troubled. For what you have helped us do for our brothers and sisters, we thank you. For what we have yet to do, we ask for your strength. Bless our 2023 appeal through this intercession. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Venerable Nelson Baker, pray for us. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> and as we get ready for our, a few announcements, I just want to mention, through the years, so many people have said to me, I don't give because I had a cousin or I had a friend, and they went to help, get help from Catholic Charities, and they were refused. They weren't helped out, so I'm not going to give. And you know why the people refused? Because not enough people gave donations to keep the office open or to pay for another social worker. It wasn't Catholic Charities' fault that they had to say no. It was because not enough people gave money to help them to continue to help those people. End of sermon. <laughs> I'll be as quick as I can here. <laughs> Save the date. This year's chicken barbecue will be on Sunday, August 13th. Our next children's mass is this coming Sunday, May 7th, at the 10.30 a.m. mass. Our Cover Girls Book Club meets again on Monday, May 8th at 7 p.m. They are reading The Magnificent Lives of Marjorie Merriweather Post. The Men's Club will meet on Tuesday, May 9th at 9 a.m., and the Senior Group will meet on Wednesday, May 10th after the noon communion service. Join us Saturday, May 13th for our Mommy and Me group. Share roses and thorns for the month, find some calm and rest through reflection and prayer, and let your kiddos enjoy a play date together. Josh's ongoing Lonergan lecture series will continue on Friday, May 26th at 6.30 p.m. with Sacred Science, a presentation on the apparent conflict between religious belief and beliefs born of the scientific method. Sandwich Ministry won't meet again until June. In the meantime, our homeless ministry is in need of travel-sized toiletries. They can be dropped off in the usual space. If you still have a rice bowl, please drop it off at the office this week. Thank you. We need sacristans for the 10.30 a.m. Mass. Please contact Mary Sondell if you'd like to help. For updates on the House of Hope, see the newsletter for more details. St. Joseph's University Parish is collecting used bikes to give to refugees. Bikes can be dropped off in the church parking lot Saturday, May 13th from 8.30 a.m. until 1 p.m. Bike pickups can also be arranged. Contact information for the collection organizers is in the newsletter. For our students, our UB Rooted Women's Group meets this Monday, May 1st. We will be reflecting on the portrayal of women in art and then painting. Meatloaf, tater tots, and gravy for this week's Wednesday night dinner. There is no Emmaus Reflection Group this week. Instead, join us for a game night Thursday, May 4th at 7 p.m. in the student lounge. We'll have a second Coffee and Confessions Day on Saturday, May 6th. Join us at St. Michael's downtown for confession at 11 a.m. and mass at 12.10 p.m. Afterwards, we'll journey into the city to find a fun cafe. During finals week, the Newman Center will be open for extended hours so that students have space to study and rest and also get tasty snacks. More details next week. Oh, is that all? Ed! I knew you'd come to the rescue, Ed. <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you. Very, very quick. The split club dinner will be held May 25th at Sean Patrick's. The bar opens at 6, dinner's at 7. Please respond to the invitation no later than May 14th. Extra tickets and tickets for non-members are $42. They can be purchased online or you can give it to me at Mass or put it in the collection basket or mail it in. I have extra invitations if anyone needs one. We still have plenty of the professionally designed UBNC bumper stickers or magnets. The, they're two for five dollars. The proceeds from the sale of this goes directly to the efforts of campus ministry on campus. Thank you. Oh, I thought you had another announcement. Right. Let us stand in prayer. <laughs> kind shepherd, look upon us, your flock, 
May you always be pleased to settle in eternal pastors, we, the sheep that you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. May God bless us and many through us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Closing song can be found in your hymnal number 606. Glory and praise to our God. 606 in your hymnal. in his ways in his wisdom he strengthens us like gold that's tested in